Yo, it's getting crazy at DraftKings Casino. Play hundreds of games all summer long like their exclusive Rocket. New players start by playing just 5 bucks to get 50 bucks in casino credits in your pocket instantly. All you got to do is download the DraftKings Casino app and sign up with code NOCHASER5. You'll be soaking up the fun in no time. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per opt-in new customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credits awarded which require one-time playthrough within 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com dot com slash promos. Restrictions apply. Tell me what you want and I, oh, I will give it to you. <laughs> what an interesting place to start. Cause you want my love. My love. Do you ever dream? Do you ever dream? Did you could it rain? I could sing in that key too. Rain drops. I was like, I gotta stop trying to meet him at his key because it's sounding crazy right now. Uh, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the No Chaser Podcast. I'm Tim Chantarangsu. I'm Ricky Shucks. And wow, 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 wow. We tried. To make it happen, we did a whole special event night <laughs> for this motherfucker. I left my family. Ricky Shucks cut his whole everything short everything, that day. Everything, everything. Um, just for us to get the month wrong, and by us, I mean you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I take full accountability for that. I fucked up. I fucked up a thousand percent. Oh, we were very man. upset. But <laughs> my bad. Oh, he, got, he got the month right. Got my boy Russell, formerly deep fried. Yeah. Yes, sir. Bjaw. Oh god, yo! The, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Sorry. In the motherfucking building. Uh, hey, hey, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome back. Welcome hey, back. hey, we're here. You um, you were actually my last episode right before the whole pandemic shut down, yeah, and we I started doing that. in-house Zoom episodes, and um, that was like that was like what two thousand one. 20, 2020. 2020. Like, that was literally right when, like, because uh, I had to, like, get out, like, almost the next day mm -hmm. due to the toilet paper shortage and the fucking... <laughs> everybody was, oh, like, yeah, going dumb crazy over the pandemic. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, like, you and I were sitting up in there like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> it was eerie. It was eerie. Even before everything officially shut down, it was like... It's, a, it's, it's spooky. It's spooky outside. Yeah, yeah it was kind of weird. But we're here. Now we outside. Like, Four years later. Like nothing. Like nothing. How about that? And I'm nasally and sick from God knows what. <laughs> and know? We don't even care. Kill us. <laughs> Kill us with it, dog. No, you know what? I got this fucking sinus infection, man. You ever had one of those before? I feel like I have, but like, uh, like, uh, refresh me on how your what your what your symptoms are. Well, it's hitting me crazy because at first I I thought it was allergies at first, and then I was like, why do my teeth hurt? Right. So I googled. <laughs> Teeth hurt, sick, and it said sign that can be caused by a sinus infection. Is that contagious? I, it's an infection, so I. It, no, I, I googled before. We got here. <laughs> okay, fuck. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Like you're gonna get me sick now. Well, I mean, I I deserve it kind of because of the thing that I did. But you like, my still. teeth hurt. <laughs> you put sinus in my teeth. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up, man. Like I'm I'm I was I've been blowing snot like all types of crazy colors I've never even blew before, like dark oranges and yellows. It's Jesus. Wild. Apparently, that's when your 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 white blood cells are working extra hard to beat the infection. Irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're here now. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Good to fucking see you, man. Um, you know, just to, just for background, if, if anybody is a, a casual watcher and you're not super familiar with this this man and our and our relationship, uh, <laughs> um, I've known you probably since. Well, I've known we've been internet friends since you were like. 15 yeah probably. 14 15 on myspace 14 15 um uh strictly platonic no no freaky, <laughs> no freaky dicky dms <laughs> jesus you, you gotta be clear the <laughs> fact you that you even <laughs> had to like <laughs> clear that up <laughs> and uh you know back when we were just uh being silly on youtube and then uh rapper singer 
we've both evolved and changed names over the years. Yeah, now singer and not rapper. You are exclusively crazy. only singing now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, rebrand. Okay, and I remember I was kind of talking to you on on the cusp of that. I felt like it was about to start happening. It was about to, yeah. yeah. You were like, right, like, it was funny because no, the last, last time. No, last time you were in LA, we got some tacos, but you yes. were on the podcast. Okay. Yes, yeah, there we go. I was yeah, trying yeah. to remember because you, you you're in one of my music videos from that time. Yeah, I took the clip of us like like hanging out, and I put it in a music. Video. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like the last time we talked, I was like I had released like a rap album. Yeah, and yeah, I was pretty sure that like that was gonna be the lane until <laughs> some things kind of switched around and changed. But okay. yeah, any uh, specific reason for that? Well, like to break it all down, really. Um, you want some tequila? Yeah, let's do it. Let's of course. Fucking do it. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> honestly, when it comes down to like me making music, yeah. I I think like the process of making music was like I was beating a dead horse. Mm -hmm. Like I just I like was I wouldn't say falling out of love because like I'll always be hip hop. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I always love hip hop. Like that's my thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm like a I'm a hip hop kid first. Like yeah. that was, yeah. I grew up in this shit. Mm -hmm. But like I'm more of like a consumer. Like when it comes to the devel the development of music, I fell in love with like making music. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you make good music. Thank you. Really? I yeah. appreciate yeah, that. Like for real. Um, <laughs> and it was just like musically, it just wasn't working anymore mm -hmm. because like a lot of what my rap branding was when I was like younger was the fact that I was young as hell rapping. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And then like I got into my adult years and that appeal is like gone. It's like, what are you <laughs> rapping about now? Like yeah. oh, rapping sense. about my dick and then like <laughs> I'm a sick rapper like yeah. there was no other like story i could tell and then like a bunch of like mental health stuff and yeah. like rapping about my struggle but even that i didn't want to like take my depression and make that like a brand you know what i'm I saying like i don't want to be like oh yeah like you know what i'm saying uh, oh the the hits are down you know what make another song about your depression right. yeah. and right. it's like that's just, disingenuous because then you, you know gotta be like you gotta play like you're depressed all the time yeah, yeah. And or not, just like, never get happy <laughs> yeah it's like and it, it was weird because like i think too like the fan base that i had at the time that I still have now, but like at the time, you know, of course, like things have changed since back then, but but it was like a load of expectations that were on me to just keep being this version of myself that was yeah, like yeah. 17 and angry and yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like everybody's expecting me to be that at 27 and I'm like, guys, yeah. like I, I had grown up a lot and I'm not pissed and <laughs> don't have teen yeah. angst anymore. Right, like right, right. I'm like chilling, yeah. but everybody- I like, like women. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for real. I like, got grown angst. Yeah, yeah. Like I got grown depression and grown problems now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not at that. Like and and I think too, it was just like me trying to service that all the time and try to satisfy people and like seeing a comment and being like, no, no, I, I'm sick. I'm a, like I didn't fall off. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like oh, he's he's losing it. Like why is he singing? And like you know, I would sing on songs and it'd be crazy. Like I'd see the Spotify stats mm -hmm. and the songs I would sing on, I get way more streams than the songs I was rapping on. Right, yeah. right, right. Like I could even. I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna pull it up, but just for sake of the conversation, like yeah. I could pull it up and I have receipts. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this is like <clears throat> this stuff is working for me, but like this other stuff that like people are getting at me in the comments about that I'm actually getting very insecure about. It's like, they're not even paying attention to that. They yeah. don't really give a fuck about that. Yeah. But it, it's like, I was just in this like trying to prove everybody thing. And it's a part of growing up when you're just like, fuck proving it to people. Like, mm -hmm. I oh shit, sorry. Mm. We're, yeah, we're in the cut. Sorry, you're not drinking, but yeah. Cheers. But like, it got to this point where I'm like, I'm beating this dead horse trying to like, satisfy everybody's needs for like what like I need to do but it's like yeah. why can't I just do what I want that's when it's not fun anymore right when yeah. you get caught in the the hamster wheel of like what do they want from me mm -hmm. yeah and like you feel like you got to live up to everybody's expectation you cranking out shit that you feel like it's what they want it's it's gonna get the views and then um, yeah dog and then it got to a point where it's like 
I'm making all these like rap songs and I'm like super angry on them. And then I'm like in a, I, I'm in my real life, genuine lifestyle, like in a car with a bunch of girls that like my homegirls, like, yeah. and it's like, oh, th- like put your shit on. And I'm like playing my shit. And I'm like, you know, I am going through some things right now. And I'm like, this is not the music I want to play for my homegirls right but, now. Like, but, but wait, 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 this, it, it gets good. It gets yeah, good. Yo, that's, yeah. I swear to you, that's how it was wait for such a, a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yo, dead ass. And then I would sing on the hook and they'd be like, oh yeah, this is great you know <laughs> and then it got you know it got to a point where um so around the time i met you yeah. um like two months prior to that i i like had made this song it was like a voice note song it was like over a guitar okay my friend had like sent me like a like a little guitar sample to my bottom really- dollar <laughs> Excuse me, you mean the greatest fucking Billboard hit of all time? I love Bottom um, Dollar. <laughs> nah, it was uh, it was uh, it was a song called Scarlet's Weekend. My friend had sent me a shout out Kevin's hideout. Uh, my friend had sent me guitar loops, and I was so I I finished like the rap album. But what I was gonna do is be like, yeah, like I'm gonna do a rap album, and then I'm gonna do an R and B album, mm-hmm. and then another rap album. And I was just like so all over the place yeah. with what I wanted to do because again, like. I wanted to satisfy the one hater in the comments uh-huh. that was like, oh, he's a pussy now. Like, what is this gay auto-tune <laughs> shit? And I'm like, that the gay auto-tune shit is actually what I like doing. Right. Yeah. Um, right, right. So I, I, I had this voice note song and... Around the same time, I released this like cover online of me just singing, mm. and it's in like the rap. Ro- it was so that's how you knew I didn't have direction at the time. Like it was during my rap album rollout, yeah. I make a cover of a song singing. Like, mm. What? <laughs> so and it got I, the most traction. <laughs> the most traction, yeah. and people from the industry are now hitting me like, yeah, yeah. "Oh my god!" Like, who is this guy? You yeah. know, because I look different too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, the perm my hair. You know what I mean? The, the face tattoos. It made it made me look like a whole other person. So a lot of people from the industry were seeing it. And this manager hit me up at the time and she she had a talk with me and she's like, so you're trying to rap? I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, like rap and sing, you know? Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to be Drake over here, you know? <laughs> and she gave me some really good advice. She she gave me the Sean Parker drop the V from the, the Facebook type mm-hmm. thing. Ah, yes. <laughs> and she was like, look. And, and I at that point I told her my whole background. We had a whole conversation and she's like, you know, if you want to change your life, if you want to change your family's life, mm. if you really want to have a second go out of it, like at this, like you're saying, drop the rap, man. <laughs> like sing. Like you have a you have a gift, and I think what you're doing right now is you're just you're going to the wrong place, but mm. you're doing the right thing. Mm. Yeah. You know, the work ethic is there, but I'm doing the wrong. You know what I mean? Like That's a hell of a pitch. If you care about your family, <laughs> no, yeah, uh, just sing, man. Oh my God. <laughs> But, you know, I had, I had let her know the spiel, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean, of what I was going through and, and the background. And she was being a thousand percent honest. And right. that's something, you know, we don't work anymore. Mm. But I'll always respect her for telling me that, mm. you know, that she she put a battery in my back because I had already been singing. In like mm. 2017, when I was Deep Ride, like I put out an R&B album and yeah. it was the best thing that the, the, the Loverboy album was the best project I had ever put out at the time, mm-hmm. like performance wise, reception wise. And that was me, majority of that singing. Yeah, I was gonna so, say, was Loverboy no raps? Was it like... It, there was a couple raps on there just yeah. because, again, I'm yeah. over here trying to satisfy people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like I'm not fully doing what I want to do. Um, but, again, like the songs that were more melodic on that one... Did the best. Yeah. Did the best. I remember so, when it was like, this little deep ride thinks he can sing now. And all of a sudden it was like... <laughs> Hey, why you sound kind of good? <laughs> yeah. you, sing you know, it got to a point where a peer of ours, I won't say who, but a peer of ours hit me like, yo, what are your auto-tune settings? Because you sound good. And I'm like, uh-uh, bro. <laughs> this is talent. <laughs> wow, Andrew Garcia. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. Um, but I say that, uh, I say all this to say um, I switched the lane. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, actually, I'll tell you the whole breakdown because you were in, like, you know, me, me coming to the podcast was mm-hmm. in the middle of all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it just so happened that like, it just so happens that like two weeks after that, I was going to LA to promote this album. Right. Okay. And come see you do the podcast, come see David. So, and, and do everything. So I went, I came here and I had label meetings that week because the album was out mm-hmm. every label meeting. I would play them everything that was on the rap album. They'd be like, eh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would play them that voice note. Mm. along with a music video that I made along with it mm-hmm. that I'd spent like $300 to make. Yeah. It was crazy. And I'm sitting there and I'm I'm seeing the reactions to the record mm. and everybody was telling me like this is the shit. Mm. Yeah. This is that shit. Like mm-hmm. yo, when you put this out, they're really going to know it. Like they're really going to know what the fuck is good. Yeah. And I'm like 
damn it, like the universe is fucking <laughs> yeah. telling me that this is what I should do. It'd be doing that. And then, yeah. yeah, like I met with that manager and she she really, she put the battery in my back. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get to it. She introduced me to another guy that um, was like, let me get you a deal. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if you can really commit to this, let me get you a deal. So he got me a deal. Um, and I was like, let me commit to this. Because after 10 to 15 years of music, I haven't felt like, I haven't felt fulfilled mm. like this in such a long time where it's like, okay, everybody else likes it, but mine is them. Yeah. yeah. I'm feeling, like, I'm hearing this and I'm like, yo, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what? And and I won't say it was effortless, mm -hmm. but in a sense, it kind of, like, fit like a glove. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, this is what I like kind of doing and experimentally, like, recording myself and, and doing all this stuff. It's like an exploration of, like, yeah. Like the inner, like what I really, really like doing. Mm -hmm. And as a man, I just kind of had to step up to the plate and be like, all right, dude, like, fucking do it. Yeah, let's fucking fully commit to this. Let's jump into it. And, you know, when I was doing the podcast with you, mm -hmm. I was in this position where I was like, fuck, like, <laughs> I kind of want to make this decision, but I got to promote this album now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, of course, going through some other shit in life, I was just like, kind of sad at the time and yeah. <laughs> just not knowing where things were going to go because the pandemic was gonna was about to happen. So I was just in a bunch of confusion. Yeah. But, you know, the record deal came in, in, in good time and throughout the pandemic, at least financially, I was taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I got to finally sit and make the album that I wanted to make and mm -hmm. make the music that I wanted to make. And I was like, this is the path. Like, I feel great. Um, and the music is great. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, like, on top of that, and I know people are going to hate to hear this, but, like, the industry thought it was great. Yeah. And for like more than a decade, I was trying to break into the industry and do something. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if the people know out there, but you go to a label meeting and sometimes you play music and people are like, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not giving a fuck. And like the song stops and they're like, oh shit, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah play the next one. Mm -hmm. You know, and <laughs> yeah. I got that for years. Mm -hmm. Like it's so unrewarding to get that for 10 years of your life. You That's weren't on the table, of... you weren't on the tables jumping around and dancing? <laughs> That's the thing, I wasn't trying, yo, you know what's fucked up Russell, though? Bitch. Is that, Russell, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's fucked up though is that Deep Pride did that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean and you see videos of that and you're yeah. like, oh, okay, that's, that's what I gotta, gotta do. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, that was Deep Pride's life in New York. Like yeah. when I lived in New York yeah. and I was like, and over here, like coming over here, trying to talk to labels, like, you know, okay, rap for them. Okay, yeah. sing for these guys, you yeah. know? And and I had to do the Bobby Schmurda and jump on top of the table <laughs> yeah. and do a bunch of shit. But I didn't want to do that anymore. You right. know, I wanted the music to speak for itself. Yeah. And I wanted people to really understand what the fuck I was trying to do creatively. Um, and it That's just dope. got... I mean, a lot of people um, are, I feel like, are in the industry for years or trying to get into it and even never get to the point where they actually get to do something that they truly love and feel fulfilled by. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, um, that's beautiful, man. You know, I, you've been doing it for a, a long time. You were just a little baby. Yeah, I was. <laughs> definitely. And it, it's funny because I, I was just talking to Rick about this, but mm -hmm. like... Uh, like two days ago, I I like uh, we did like a surprise set, like a uh, because uh, the album came out Friday, so okay, dope. You know, the Saturday after, I had to fly here and mm -hmm. do a set for you know uh, a couple people at the release party. I wish you came through. That it was it was super tight. Like this everybody last was, night, day before it last was Saturday. Night? What's today? Monday. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I forget, man, you know, kid. It's cool, yeah, you're a dad. <laughs> you're a dad. Um, but, um, you know, I was I was playing the show, and, and one thing I said throughout the show, which was what I realized that morning, was like. I haven't played a song on stage or in front of people in LA since 2013. Dang. That's funny. Then, and that 2013? was you and I, I did I at the Roxy. <laughs> oh my God. Damn. So that is. Well, I brought out Tori? Uh, yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Tori was there. Dumbfounder was there. You were there. Andrew was there. Like, that was like a. Yeah. Like, Damn, son. What a memory. But That's it crazy. was like, that made me see, like, I got a second go at this thing because, like, I took a risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if people don't respect that, then, like, fuck them. Because mm -hmm. it's, like, this is a beautiful thing to see. Like, for 10 years, I was, like, in the dirt. Like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I was really, I really had, like, the movie story of a washed up <laughs> singer. Like, <laughs> people don't really understand that. Yeah. Like, but I really did. And, like, I don't know. It's, like, I can't, I, I don't want to go off on, like, a full hour of how happy I am about it, but it's just I'm in a position now where, Talk like, your happy shit, homie! Yeah. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> but, like, you know, what's really fully understood doesn't have to be all the way explained, and, like, I'm just, I'm, like, happy now that I'm in, like, this full, like, 
when people ask me for a record, they know what they're asking for. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to do a feature, I know what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. And, I'll, you know, when it comes to getting into a session or something, it's like, I know what I'm going to do now. Yeah. You know, like, instead of just like, all right, <laughs> how do I fit these bars yeah. into yeah. this? <laughs> and, you know, like, how can I rap about my dick in eight ways? You know I'm what I mean? I'm still doing that. It's tough, man. <laughs> <laughs> I do, like, one track a year. Usually it's just a collab with somebody. It's like one verse. Out. And it's like, all right, man, I'm still, I'm still talking about oh my dick. My but, here, but the difference is, I'm fulfilled talking yeah, about my he dick. He loves so, talking about his dick. Y'all like, that want me to not talk about my dick? I can't do it, man. <laughs> that's what you find joy in, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like, you know, especially in, in what I do now and, and, and coming to meetings now and, and playing records for people, I now have this, like, thing in my heart where I'm like, okay, if they don't feel it, it's cool because yeah. I do. That's um, got to be dope, especially for it to be, like, a rebrand and then it just works. Because mm -hmm. it actually fucking works, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. for me, I your playlisting is really good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I would listen to, like, a Blast playlist. And it would have a bunch of different artists that sound like or whatever. And I'd just be going. And majority of the times, if I'm like, who is that? It's this motherfucker. <laughs> and... They don't sound alike. Mm. So there's somebody's like, nah, but if you like this, you gonna like this. Yeah, and yeah. And I was like, it works. And it wasn't me being like, oh, I know him. Okay, let me listen. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It was just, who is this? And then I look at my <laughs> thanks, phone, man. I'm like, I'm fucking Russell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it thanks, was, man. A lot of him or Devon Terrell. Shout out Devon Terrell. Shout out Devon. Oh, yeah, shout out him. <laughs> and and I just want to say, too, because he's on that, uh, he's, he's like really, really on that, like, um, his whole thing now is like mix engineering and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, on some geek shit, he put out a template, mm -hmm. like a Pro Tools template, like yeah. a, for your voice and shit, yeah. um, for your vocal chain. And I actually use that. Oh, oh word? Yeah. Hey, yeah. So shout out, shout Devon out Terrell. to Devon Terrell. I yeah. promise you, I'm going to get to that track I sent you. <laughs> get it's, to it, bro. Man, it's fuck. It's such a good Promise this yourself. Is you are thing. fucking up for you it's right so now. Good. I said it to him like, I, like probably pre pandemic. It's so good. It's so Damn. good. Dude, you gotta. <laughs> he has to put out more music. You gotta put out more music, I, I know, man. I know, I know. You're really good. <laughs> hey, well, I appreciate that, man. Like, uh, you, you know, it's funny about this song I, I sent to Devon. It was a concept I had. It's it's just like it's an old. It's a hook from a Usher and JD song. And I was like, and I was like, hey, bro, like let's let's just flip this. I sent him a beat, and then he sent it back to me like, like a day later. And I'm like, He's like, oh, oh, you be doing it, doing it. <sighs> all right, yeah. all right. I'm I getting, see you a couple years. But here's, here's what's perfect. It's a great, like, summer banger. <laughs> so I got, like, no a, time. A it's summer, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put that out, like, next Shit. year. Yeah. <laughs> or next oh, year. No. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I don't know. We might see the end of uh, flipping old joints after this year. You might gotta do it now. You think so? Uh, I, I think it's he? coming. Nah, <laughs> it's just it's overdone, and now most of them are bad. Not gonna say any name. Yeah, <laughs> but most of them are not good. So. Yeah, in my opinion, I mean, it, if as long as it's done in taste, it's good. But I think now, when it comes to like certain record companies and you know certain execs, like they just want the easy. Yeah. Yeah. They want the easy chart topper, mm -hmm. and it, you know when it comes to the people in office and and certain A and R's, it's like. They don't really fully check out the artists that yeah, they're, no. you know, a and r -ing, and they're just like, you know what? You rap? Hey, say, <laughs> check out the sample from, yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> oh, check out this record from, like, I saw Drink in My Cup by Kirk Cobain's get sampled the other day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dog, that's not even, like, nostalgia. That's <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, 13 years ago, yeah, but, like, Kirko's still out here. No, you know what I mean? Like, don't fucking, do that. These TikTok kids are, have you seen? They're literally redoing like oh, yeah. recent songs and, calling and it saying theirs. my song. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, her version is really good too. Version? Bruh. That's yeah. her song. Were you what the are you one that sent me about? someone redid an LMA song? Yeah. And that's was what like, I'm talking about. My song. Yeah. She's the one who told somebody, like, yeah, I really love her version too. When they were like, girl, that's not your song. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it weirds me out when people are like, oh, throwback. And it, the song was like five years ago. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? This is still like recent. <laughs> it's so crazy. But I'm willing to bet the labels are behind that. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, must have like, been probably like, all right, we want a quick resurgence of this. Let's put it out. I mean, <laughs> being within that 
that's exactly what they do, yeah. you know. And and I'm uh, somebody as somebody who's like a songwriter that like actually I have fun trying to find the new melody. Like yeah. I have fun trying to find pockets and not use samples. Like I, it's not a thing where I'm like, oh yeah, fuck samples. Like I'm too right, good right, for right. that. No, yeah. like if I find a great sample, we're gonna find it. But at the end of the day, I'm an in independent musician. I'm not trying to clear that. Yeah, exactly. you know what I mean. Like <laughs> so, <laughs> what's funny is I'm like. I'm like, if I actually do this track with Devon, I'm like, hopefully it pops off enough, but not so much that a label is like, hey, 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 motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get what you Well, mean. you got to just put it out for free and then you kind of good. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't ride the uh, under the radar. Nah, <laughs> you, Until they, I get they, a cease and desist. No, they don't send cease and desist no more. They sue right away. You just they like on you yourself know. right yeah. now. <laughs> they like, nah, you know you doing wrong. <laughs> Ain't that's no cease and desist. That's not me. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's weird though because like, you know, of course like the clearances and all that, like sometimes the artists don't even really make money off those songs. Yeah. Because all the publishing is going mm -hmm. to like Literally, the guy who made it before. Yeah, ah, and the bigger the record was, <laughs> the less you oh, go trust. get. <laughs> but you know, it, it, again, done in good taste. Like that fast car song, like they yes, they sample. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, that's like done within good taste. You know, it's not like taking the first eight bars from. Um, I'm trying to think of like a record that taking the first eight bars from Boot Up and like putting <laughs> trap drums over it. I know. Yeah, and then you know what I mean? Like it's just. Uh. But you know, shout out to you and your hooks because um, Homegirl, our our most recent collaboration oh, is my that. most streamed Spotify song. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. So shout out to you. Even though I told you the music video was like Shadow Band, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. You literally, if you look up- It was hating. If you yeah. try to find the music video on YouTube, it doesn't pop up. That's why. Like, it's six, super hate. Six million views, but booty? you gotta- you got. I don't know why, but you gotta go to my page, specifically look for it in my yeah. playlist to watch it. But. It's because all the ass in the video, Probably. bro. <laughs> it, was, it was tasteful ass, though. I feel- mm. You can't not have ass no more. All I see is ass all day long. What? It's fucked up. Yeah, weird. I don't know, man. But you know, I'm glad you're doing better, bro. Like it's you thanks, know, man. I've you know, I, cause I just feel like you know, on some cliche shit. You know, I really look at you as like I'm my little brother in this YouTube shit. You know, thanks. And I've seen you kind of evolve and you know have your ups and downs. And I just I love that you're in a positive space and you're loving life and you're thanks, man. What you do, you're welcome, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a that, no, it's a big compliment because like um, when it came down to just everything within my life and like being in the industry as like a young kid yeah. and being so impressionable and having everybody t pull me in and like tug me into these like, okay, this is what I want you to be, mm -hmm. you know? And it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't like the managers I was working with, it was like the fan base that wanted me to be this angry rapper right. that they saw a billion years in like the MC showcase. And like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, and if it wasn't that, it was like, you know, certain friends of mine that were trying to drag me into like, oh, don't be Hollywood, you know? So I was just being like, it was like everybody was grabbing me this arm, this arm, this leg, and like I didn't have any room for myself to just breathe and chill for a sec. Mm -hmm. And I think for the first time in years, I do have that. And yeah. I have the floor now to like just do whatever the fuck I want and be happy and, you know, and I'll take the accountability if things don't work. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Like I'm I'm down like to to be like, okay, this fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm down to take the failure now because I'll hold myself accountable for the changes I've made, like, because I'm happy about them. Yeah. You know, you this ever, is. Do you ever feel like you, um, it's like low key a blessing that you didn't pop off at like 16? All the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Mainly because you see me in that era. I mean, like, from from who I was as a person, like, I got bullied as a kid. Um, you know, I won't talk too much on it, but I faced a lot of abuse as a kid, whether it was like emotional or physical, and like, it really like. You know, when you take a kid like that, mm -hmm. almost like in a sense, like a loser, mm -hmm. and you and you put him in the spotlight, and now he's like the shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you have everybody around him like, you're the shit, mm -hmm. you're the shit, you're the shit. That kid's not gonna take it right. And people mm -hmm. don't really understand that. You know yeah. what I mean? And and when I was able to, especially when I went broke and fucking lost everything, when I was able to like sit and reflect about shit. When'd you go broke? Was, when that happened? Oh, so many times in this shit. That's like literally my whole life. You know what I mean? Dealing with the music industry and all that. I mean, you know, I could break down the story for you after the deal. I mean, I won't disclose, you know, within respect to the people that I did business with, I'm, I'm not going to go on a tour and fucking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Be a fucking piece of shit. Nah. You know, 
respect to everybody I worked with prior to now. Um, but you know, I, I went through the label system again. I had been signed and and I'd separated from my deal in 2022. Mm -hmm. And it was just like during a really fucking rough time. I'm not again, can't disclose so much. Um due to some privacy things and, mm -hmm. you know, the respect I have for a lot of people. But I got to this point where um, I had to separate from the label and things weren't going well financially. Um, and of course, because like, you know, I'm not doing shows at the time and this is like a little after the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and I'm great with my money too, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm great, I'm great with my money management. It's just like, how long can you stretch yeah. out? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It's like one up. payment for however long, yeah. right? So I I was at this point where, and I remember it was February of 2022, like my cat died and that was like my boy. Like yeah, yeah. my cat and I were fucking tight. Like I yeah. was fucking, that's all my life was. Making music in this one bedroom apartment with my cat. I was so happy. <laughs> like everybody knew, like that's Russell, that's Angel. And yeah. they like to hang out in this crib all day. And uh -huh. he makes music and he'll come out for a drink every now and then. But he has to be home at 10 because he wants to feed his cat and like cuddle with his Oh, cat. okay. I wasn't yeah. sure who so, you was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's my cat. Come out Angel. for a drink. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yo, shout out to my cat though. You know, he enjoyed, he, he enjoyed a nice little uh, kibbling water and, <laughs> and hang out um but you know i lost my cat at the time mm -hmm. and then it, it just so happened that my mom's birthday was the 15th of that month so mm -hmm. i you know and then the prior day before that was like valentine's day and mm -hmm. like you know i'm being ghosted by girls that i like and shit and i'm like <laughs> okay but i'm also going broke and like losing everything in my life yeah and it was a weird time you know a lot of my friends too like when i was going through my situation like I wasn't the greatest person to be around. Mm. Like, I was dumb suicidal, like, mm. crazy depressed, you mm. know. Every time somebody called me, it was just like, uh. Eh. And then every time I called somebody, it was some risky fucking super heavy shit. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Like, mm. oh, dude, this happened. I, I, I need your help with this. Yeah. And a lot of my friends around me at the time were just like, dude, this is draining. Yeah. Like, we can't be around this, man. Like, and I, dra I, I, I couldn't drag them all down with me. And at that point, I, I really had nobody to call. Mm. You know, I just had my dad and my sister at the time. Mm. And like, I give them so much, I give them so much credit because like, that was really all I had, you know. I think at times, like I did message you just on some funny shit, just to, mm. you know, I didn't want to like fully break it down to you. But I, mean, I, yeah. I remember at times you would reach out, which yeah, was yeah. really, really cool. Um, but it's like, other than that, like all my friends in entertainment, when they saw what was going on, nobody hit me back, mm. you know what I mean? And it mm. was like, it really made me see like, you could be the shit one day and then and then uh yo this this guy's calling me fuck what do i say mm. the next mm. you know so it, it really fucking ruined me and mm. yeah i was just in this like weird position where i had all these i still had my album mm. and i wanted to put it out but i didn't want to just like go to like distro kit or something and yeah, right. put it out with no money and yeah, yeah. no backing or marketing behind it mm. and then on top of that my fans are like where's the album you're falling off mm. so i can't even like cope with them because like right. they're just you know yeah. in respect to everybody that listens to my music currently love i love the people that support me but like yeah. you know it's it's a very y'all are annoying <laughs> it's it's a very evident fact that fans are fickle. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, sure. you know, Absolutely. especially nowadays. Yeah, you don't like, push it out for two months. They're like, this will f fell off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they were they were filling my shit up with that pause, and they were filling my shit up with that. And and there was like no safe place for me at the time. Mm. And I was just like, you know what? I just got to thug it out. Yeah. And I thugged it out. I really did thug it out for a straight year mm. up until 2023 when I met with this dude, Gavin, shout out Gavin Shepard. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people in Toronto know, like that dude is like, he he helps so many people. Like he's, he's a legend. That guy's like a fucking legend where I'm from. Um, and I met up with him and and he really believed in what I was doing. And prior to meeting up with him, like I went to, I won't say who I went to, but mm -hmm. I went to a couple labels and I was playing stuff and you know, it was great music, but it was also like, he's kind of like, mm. It's an Asian guy that wears like beat up shoes and yeah. you know like he has tattoos. Yeah, he's just like he's not wearing a blazer with a sh no shirt under. You know what I mean? So it <laughs> yeah. was like I was just going through this thing where I was like, okay, I'm R and B, but I'm myself. Yeah, they yeah. don't like me being myself. They want me to be a fuck boy. Yeah, and 
I'm not that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just going going through a lot of like, don't call us, we'll call you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, again, at the time <laughs> I'm broke, right? So I'm trying to like fucking, I'm trying to save up enough money to come to LA and I'm spending like two grand to go to LA. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all, the, the last 2,000 I have left only to go to this meeting and have a guy be like, all right, we'll hit you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, going back, <laughs> sleeping on my homie's couch. Like, all right, that didn't go well. Uh, where am I going to get my next dollar now? You know, <laughs> right, so- right. I went through a lot of that. For a straight year, I went through that. Like, full 365. You can and stay on my couch in LA next time you pull up, dog. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll babysit, too. Like, sure. I'll let you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I met with Gavin, and, um, you know, he he helped me out. He had a, pub, uh, he had a, he had a company out there called Public Records, mm -hmm. and... You know, he took a chance on me. He really did, like, and and helped me out from there. And that was, I think, like May or June of 2023. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, it's just like been a gradual oh, up dope. since then. And and he's championed all my wacky ideas and all Good. these funny things that I'm trying to do. And that's what people need, dog. Yeah. Someone to champion your stupid ideas. Bro. Yep, yeah. Like that's what just like will really set someone apart for a success. You feel me? For sure. Like, when I, when I feel like what helped me truly, like, embrace who I am as a person was my parents championing my just stupid oh, hell ideas yeah. <laughs> from the jump, you know? So that's good that you And have I think that. that radiates, too. Especially, like, like knowing you as a friend. Like, you're, you're a very bright person, and you're also, like, dumb creative. Like, hella creative. And, right. and it, like... Through what you do and how long you've stayed in it, you could tell you've been encouraged just to keep going and like have fun with this shit. I talk to Rick all the time, you know, about how it, it started off as just really dope encouragement and it's morphed into uh, <laughs> like damn near, um, what's the word, Rick? Uh, egotistical delusion? Egotistical <laughs> delusion. Yo, you better crank that AC because things are heating up at DraftKings Casino. The excitement is endless, the vibes are right, and the cash prizes could be huge. Play hundreds of games all summer long. Dive into a casino classic or blast off with DraftKings exclusive Rocket. New players, start by playing just five bucks to get 50 bucks in casino credits in your pocket instantly. All you gotta do is download the DraftKings Casino app and sign up with code NOCHASER5. You'll be soaking up the fun in no time. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per opt in new customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credits awarded which require one-time playthrough within 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com dot com slash promos restrictions apply I got in a good that, way so I get, yes I get in you. a really fucking good uh, way <laughs> healthy, hell everyone needs a healthy delusion if you want to be in this shit and, oh for sure and that sounds like a joke but it's not <laughs> no like it's, it's really not and like i'm dumb delusional yeah. like that's what kept me throughout that year you know mm -hmm. and of course like you know i i I'm very self-aware to know, like, I'm not, I'm not some six foot, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, model looking kid, like, That's I'm just not. played out anyways, dog. Yeah. <laughs> been played out, bro. <laughs> yeah. Height and model looking. <laughs> and it's, it, it, you know, I, I just understand, like, you know, beauty standards and, you know, of course, too, like, marketing standards within this shit. And I know that I'm not, like, the most perfect thing for anybody to market or for anybody to put out. But I just, since I was a kid, always had this delusion, like, I'm going to be mm -hmm. a, I'm gonna, you know, when I, even when it comes to, like, my mom, rest in peace, but, like, I always told her, like, I'm going to be, like, my mom loved Madonna. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mom, I'm going to be Madonna. Yeah, like, I'm yeah. not going to be some local dude playing at this bar. And, again, like, when it comes to the local dude playing at the bar, he probably finds joy in that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm not even dissing him. Yeah. But when it comes to what my goals are in life and what I want to see, like, a lot of people will sit here and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just want to get rich. Fuck the fame. That's yeah. what everybody says when their shit's not working out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but, you know, fuck the fame, though. I'm trying to be rich. No, fuck you. You want to be famous. Like, just shut the, shut up. It's not working. That's why you want to say that. That's funny. Um, But for me, like, 
nah, I want to be rich and famous. Like, I'm not going to be, like, the guy with the high morale sitting here trying to tell y'all, like, oh, no, like, you know, I'm doing this for the love. And 100%. Love, love. My no, guy. I, I want to do <laughs> this for the love, yeah, but yeah. I also want to feed my family. I also want to inspire people. I want to be a worldwide star and have kids that look like me look at me and be like, oh, I can do that, too. Yeah. Oh, you know? First of all, it's really fun. Uh, having the kids that look like you <laughs> talk to you. Secondly, Fucking I was going to say, same shit, man. Like, whenever people are in my shit like, you sold out, bruh. You went on this and you sold out. I'm like, I wish I sold out. Yeah, the I'm fuck? like, I'm trying. You, you must be new if you thought I was trying to do this shit for the love forever, dog. Yeah. I've been saying I'm trying to be Hollywood with this shit. Name yeah, it man. like shit, dog. Like, yeah, and, and the people that don't get that don't understand, especially as being like Asian dudes within Western media. It's yeah. like, man, like we want to be this. We I want to be like whenever I see like these award shows and I see like a Billie Eilish and a Post Malone and 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 SZA and Miley Cyrus and all this other shit. I'm like, I fucking belong there. Mm -hmm. I've literally, I, I tell everybody this, and this is like something that I reiterate in meetings and, and to a lot of people that meet me and they're like, oh, you have a great character. And I'm like, thanks. My whole character is literally built off. Like, I want to sit on, like, when I was little, I wanted to sit on the couch of David Letterman. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to sit on the couch of, you know, J Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, and, and, and talk yeah. about funny things and have the crowd laugh mm -hmm. and all this shit. I literally, like, when I watched a Joker movie and I see that scene where he's reenacting him on a talk show, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. no, I relate because that's fucking me all yeah. the time in my most depressed moments, too. And, you know, talking about the delusion, it's like, that's what helped me throughout my most depressing moments. Yeah. I was fucked depressed. And I would turn on Jimmy Kimmel and, like, just turn on the part where the crowd's roaring mm -hmm. and I'm walking. I would reenact that in my room. And then I would pause it and I would and I would just fucking be crazy and, yeah. and talk and laugh and be like, nah, this shit's going to fucking work. Bruh, Fuck yes. it. Like, Hater ass David So <laughs> told me I was ridiculous when I told him that I would be practicing award show speeches when I was a little kid taking baths <laughs> with the shampoo bottle. Yo. That's so funny. In his defense, though, that's what they put in movies for the background of the killer motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you do look like yeah, a fucking crazy yeah, person. Yeah. No, I'll admit, like, I look like a crazy guy. You know what but I mean? You but you need that, though. Yeah, that's the delusion, and I think that's healthy when um, you have a grip on your self-awareness. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I have a grip on my self-awareness. I'm not, I'm not fully, I don't think I'm the fucking high and mighty messiah of the world. Yeah. I'm just a dude. And I think that that makes me even cooler as an artist because it's like a relatable factor for a lot of people that just feel like they want to do something they love yeah. and and chase it instead of just like conforming to beauty standards, like industry standards, all this stuff. Like, oh, like, why don't I just be the guy that was myself and mm -hmm. chased it as myself and then made it as myself? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, again, I tell a lot of people about this, like, I'm a Filipino dude. A lot of Filipino dude, like a lot of Filipinos within Western media are mixed. Like 50-50. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're Filipino, but then they have this thing that makes them racially ambiguous, which uh -huh. makes them more marketable. Right. Right. But I am the only Filipino artist I know that puts myself out there like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anybody in the comments could correct me if I'm wrong. But to me, at least what I'm aware of, mm -hmm. I'm like the only one. Um Actually, you know, shout out to Pilo. You know, shout out to people like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, we're right. all trying to push it. But on, like, a pop star level, yeah, yeah. I'm tr really trying to get there, you yeah. know? And, okay, I don't speak the Galo. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't, like, you know, grown up in the Philippines. But th this is what people got to understand. I'm doing this so I could kick the door down mm -hmm. for the kid that does do that. Mm -hmm. And if he becomes a legend, I made it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good. And I'm happy with that. And have, you know? have you eaten balut? You know what? Like, <laughs> I've, 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 like, I haven't fully dove into it. Yeah. It's just like one of those, like, little, like, all right, let me have a little, you know, like you a gotta, little sample. I haven't fully dove you into it. You got to fucking bite the head off one day, dog, <laughs> and just do it. I'm so, you know, for the sake of the podcast and for yeah. conversation, I'm, I'm literally going to the Philippines tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, Shit. 11 p.m. is my you gotta do it. For the first time ever? First time ever. Wow. How fun. Yeah, that's going to be fucked. <laughs> but yeah, that's like fucking sick, bro. Yeah. All right, so what you got planned out? Are you going for like um, industry shit or are you going to like, uh, you know, I'm getting to know my roots or everything or what? Uh, yeah, I mean like a bit of both, you know, like I got a couple meetings over there um, just to, you know, like I, I really, uh, when it comes down to what I do, it's like, 
how am I going to rep for the Filipino people if I haven't ever been there? Yeah. Um, so I really want to, again, like, you know, it's a bit of both, you know, having my meetings over there and just trying to get my bu business right over there. And, you know, aside from that, it's like, I, I really want to just tap into, like, who is, who is this? You know, I've grown yeah. around, especially living in Toronto, you know what I mean? Like, you meet, you meet Filipino kids and they... They're speaking half patwa, you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, you're I come from teasing, a, you're teasing me. You're yeah, teasing me like I, 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 like I don't sound like I'm from there because right. I've split my time over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, when it comes to where I'm from, um, I, 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 I have embraced my culture, mm. of course. Like Toronto's a very cultural place, you yeah. know. But um, I gotta go there. I yeah. gotta go there to really soak it in. I can't be I can't be talking to my Filipino <laughs> homie down the block like, yeah, this is what being Filipino is really about. We go to Tim Hortons to get a coffee every day. Like it's not we have to do some Filipino shit. Um Don't go to Air Force One. <laughs> <laughs> gonna try to get you to go to Air Force One. <laughs> Don't go to Air Force One. <laughs> no, but I'm like, that sounds aggressive. <laughs> it's, a, it's a famous uh, prostitution house. Oh, <laughs> shit. A brothel? Yeah. yeah. Okay, maybe not that. Yeah, don't, maybe don't go. not that. Don't go. <laughs> um, but I'm, I, am, I'm, I am excited to see what the scene is like over there, like yeah. the music scene. I'm really excited to see how the people over there, like, kind of receive a lot of music. And funny enough, I mean, I already have a fan base out there. For sure. Sure, and there are a lot of there are a lot of artists actually out there um, that embrace like my music. Like yeah. uh, there's a guy named Al James out there, uh -huh. incredibly talented guy. Another guy named Scusta Klee, who's like an incredibly talented dude mm. that um, has even reached out to me and told me like, you know, your your shit is fucking great. You know, this song like this song is great. This song is great. And I was like, damn, y'all know particular songs. Like yeah, I didn't know I had anybody that listened to me over there. I'd hate but, to go to a, a karaoke club in the in the Philippines. You, you <laughs> Yeah, we're all out there. It's like American <laughs> Idol type shit. It's like, yeah, yeah. damn. You know, yeah. You're not supposed to sound good at the yeah. karaoke bar, dog. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, when it, when it comes to me singing, yeah. like, that's another thing that I, I love about me singing. It's like, I'm culturally, I'm like putting people on mm. to what my people like. Yeah, like, yeah. we like singing. We yeah. like really going out there and showing out. Mm -hmm. And like, um, when I released Scarlet's Weekend, I like looked on the internet and saw covers. There's a bunch of Filipino people like covering my song, yeah, looking at the Spotify stats seeing that like you know Quezon City in the Philippines is like one of my biggest markets and I'm Amazing. like holy shit like what I should have been chasing this from the jump of course but yeah. you know like the time will tell all right and I'm just happy that I'm here too like you know my whole life was like being a Filipino kid is like I grew around a lot of Filipino kids that were like a little more upper class mm. um and they always shunned me and bullied me when I was growing up and in my head um you know, of course, being a kid, you're like, you know, you're kind of ignorant to a bunch of shit, right? Yep. And I always associated, like, being Filipino with those kids. Okay. So that's when I, like, and that's why I sound like this. Like, people don't realize, like, I hung out with a lot of, like, I hung out with a lot of gangster black kids and a lot of rowdy white skater kids. <laughs> so I, you get this, you get this fusion of a kid that listens to Young Jeezy, but also listens to some Forty One yeah. and wants to wear skinny jeans, but also wants to wear like a three XL hoodie. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, I you was sound only, like an LA boy to me, man. <laughs> yeah, like, no, but that's you know what's crazy is that's why you know LA and the Bay fuck with me a lot. Like I've noticed, like you know, other than Toronto, LA and the Bay fuck with me because like I got that full on, yeah. you know, like. Yeah skater slash you know what i mean yeah. like when the gangbangers fuck with you and they so a lot of slash out here yeah, <laughs> yeah. a lot of slash yeah. no like yeah. the, and the new slash too the, the they slash them it's a lot of oh, that yeah, out there yeah yeah <laughs> but like it's it's funny because like you know when it comes down to being a filipino kid like i whenever i see representation in media it's like it's it's other things other than like the what we really see, which are these like family these fam jams we have, mm -hmm. where like mm -hmm. people are jamming out and, and and this happiness that we carry. You know, Theo Vaughn made like a funny ass joke about how Filipino people are just always <laughs> joyous and yeah. like happy, and yeah. but that's really what it is. Right, like we're really hospitable and happy and like cool. And I think that like a lot of my brand now and a lot of the music I put out exudes that. Good. And I'm like, man, I want to put this out because like. Yeah. I want people to really see that it's cool to be Filipino. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Bad Bunny makes it cool to be like Latin. You know what I'm saying? Like, and <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, you go to a you go to a Bad Bunny concert. It's sexy Latina girls 
everywhere. Yeah. And oh. you're like, yo, that's sick. And for me, I'm like, man, I want like, I want the white dude that loves Asian girls to be like, I'm going to this Russell show. <laughs> I'm meeting my wife. So we can kick his ass out. <laughs> oh, God. But <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just let him go and take an ale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let him get his heart broken. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, like, you know, when it comes to just... I'm um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> when, when it comes to um, like what I like the person that I know I want to be in 10 years it's like I really want to be a representative of who I am when it comes to being a kid from Canada mm -hmm. but also a kid like a kid that grew up within Filipino culture and like having a mom that like wanted to put you know she immigrated to Canada but she still wanted to instill certain things mm -hmm. like you know into my personality when it comes to that um, but yeah I was definitely one of those kids that was like okay sing for Tita <laughs> and I'm like oh <laughs> <Yeah>. fuck okay <laughs> yeah. um, but I think all the uh, all of that like you know when it comes to the person I am it accumulated to like a great thing and like you know, if there's any Filipino kids out there, fucking go out there, showcase your talent, be creative, you know, because we are creative and we're happy and we're fun. And I think there needs to be more of us in the field like that. And if I can open that door, so be it, you know. But if it's Filipino kids going against the Thai kids in a scene competition, Jesus Christ, Filipino kid, fall back a little bit. Let, let the Thai kid have his moment. Relax. Okay? <laughs> can you just relax a little bit? We know y'all can sing and dance. Oh, my so God. Just relax a little bit, all right? Oh, um, man. I'm, you know, hey, man, look, like I said, um, I'm glad you are at this place now. And I'm also glad that you didn't pop off when you were 16 because, you know, I was there for a year when you got a little annoying, you know. And I remember, <laughs> yeah. I remember when you were feeling yourself a little bit as a 16-year-old. But I was talking and I was like, look, man, he's 16. Everybody's gassing him up. He's going to be a little yeah. annoying right now. Let him yeah. be a kid. Yeah. And uh, you grew out of it, thank God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you got swole on him. Oh, a little my God. Bit. Get the fuck out of here. That boy started getting sexy on him. Got a perm. Started doing push-ups. Yeah. Got a perm. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you know, and what's crazy is, you know, and I, and I think a lot of people could take something from this. You know, I grew up with everybody kind of giving me this, like, idea of me that, mm -hmm. like, they were, they, they, they had an idea of me and they always tried to push it. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I wanted to work out and get healthy, you know, yeah. I had people gatekeeping that, you know, like, we don't, oh, Oh, fuck, I'm the guy that works out. I don't want him to work out now. You know, so they all filled my mind up with that. And like, oh, no, I study kinesiology. Like, no, you can't. Do you know what I mean? You got some weirdos around you, homie. Bro, I did. I really did. And and it really fucked me up as a kid. Because, yeah. like, I, I felt like I really, like, especially as a kid that wanted to just do anything. You know, yeah. I wanted to I wanted to pick up a basketball and shoot it. But everybody's like, no, uh, you're not getting drafted to this house league. Like, no, <laughs> you're not like us. You're not the blah, blah, blah. So Ew. that made me feel weird. And yeah. then and, and to the point where like the only people that really accepted me, again, were these rowdy skater kids and these gangster black kids that were yeah. like, yo, we'll put you onto what we like. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, you know, being at this position now where I'm like, I can curate what I want to like and what I want to be influenced by. It's like, I just feel free, you know? I, yeah. I want to like, if I want to go hike, I'll go hike. You know what I mean? If I want to go to the gym, I'll go to the gym, you know? And I, th and I related a lot to like a lot of kids who have parents that just like tell them, no, you're not allowed to do that. You got to be a doctor. You have to do this. You have to do this. That could be very constricting. And I think that that was my version of that. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Where yeah. everybody, including, you know, 16 year old, like annoying me, you know what I mean? I used to go back to the hotel room and just sit there and be like, Oh fuck! <laughs> How long am I gonna keep this facade up? Right, you right, know. Right. But I, I just had to keep doing it. Yeah. I remember seeing a vlog where I'm just like being like of yours, where I'm just being dumb, annoying, <laughs> and I remember just being like, I have to embody this, like keep up the bit. Mm. You know what I mean? But mm. now there's no bit. Yeah. It's yeah. just me being me. Yeah. Um, and it's emancipating. Like, it, you know, shout out to Mariah Carey. She taught me that word. Um, <laughs> me? But, yeah. Shout out the emancipation of me. me. Um, but it, it, it's freeing. It's, it's something that like, I push to people like, you know, especially like young people where like you have all these like you go on TikTok and it's just people being like, OK, you shouldn't wear this right. because oh, that's yeah. not the trend of 2024. Yeah. And like all these people telling you what you should do, yeah. like, fuck what you should do. Do yeah. what you want to do. You know, don't look stupid out here. <laughs> um, have some good morale. I'm going to shame you. But, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it still if that's what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, just do whatever the fuck you want to do, you know, as long as it makes you happy, because, you know, you could wear the dumb pair of shoes that everybody says is not trendy but what if you're the guy that makes it trendy yeah. you know what i mean hey 
Bang, bang, cheer! Hey, let's 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 cheers to that, my guy. Yeah, I, I already I went through. I ran through my shit. Here, we'll do a tiny little mm-hmm. shot just to close it out. I'm not even a shots guy. I know, me neither. I like to. Well, Are we that's, closing that's this out? Lie. Yeah, dog. It's been a lot. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. Yeah. I've just been talking this entire time. <laughs> Denisha, what are we at? Like 50 minutes or so? <laughs> okay, I gotta, can, I, can we at least spend like 15 minutes catch, catching up? Yeah, I mean, sure. I haven't seen him yeah. in a while. Yeah, about, like, yeah, we got well, like 10 well, minutes. Well, first, I got a story that goes nowhere, but it's just always been funny to me. Love it. Cheers. And cheers, you cheers reminded me of it. <laughs> cheers to growth and success yeah. and um, and realizing that you can make it being yourself and not being a facade. Cheers. Hell cheers to yeah. you. So one time I get a text from this Filipino woman who I hadn't talked to for probably two or three years before this text. <laughs> and it says, hey, I need to I need to ask you something. So I'm like, okay, what's up? A picture of you comes through. <laughs> I said, okay, she said, is that a perm? <laughs> hey, man. Look. I was like, I, was like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I'm proud of it. Proud of the pride. Uh, proud pride out here. Yo, like, people dye their hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, why why people, can't you? People why dye their you? hair. They get mohawks. What the fuck? I'm not allowed to curl my shit. You're like, come on, man. Get your fucking I'm Prince. Perm. Like, I fuck with Prince. Prince is like a, a stylistic idol of mine. Prince did whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Curl your you know hair. I mean? Louses, homie. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Look. Yeah, that shit cracked me. Oh. I, I do want to. I, I do want to ask. Um, how's fatherhood been lately? Fatherhood is is um. It's great. Yeah, I, that's not even. I was gonna make a joke. I always make a joke about how like fucking annoying. You do is. make the jokes about like not having sleep and X, Y, and Z. But that, how's it? Well, that's not a joke. You know, I, I, <laughs> but I asked in 2020. But like 2024, it's like you know. It's, uh, of course, Veda is like aged. Um, 2024 is next level shit. Um, I tell you this. Veda just turned three. So fucking smart. So funny. I. Told myself I wasn't gonna be that dad. It's always like, hey, my daughter today. <laughs> today my daughter did the funniest thing, but I'm fully that guy and I don't care. Yeah, embrace that. Y'all gonna That's get it. these funny daughter stories. <laughs> and it's okay because Rick is around enough that he knows how the shit Veda is. Yeah. So he doesn't mind. I the story. want to hear this. Yeah, yeah, he wants yeah, to hear yeah. I had to tell my podcast, everyone listens to the podcast. I'm like, sorry, y'all. <laughs> As I grow into my different chapters of life. Yeah. Y'all gonna get well, these dogs. I, I don't want to hear him here. Yeah. I want him in real life. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I don't ran out of fucking stories, guys. You know, I heard everything I've had in my repertoire three times over. <laughs> so now the only new shit in my life is the hilarious shit my three year old said. Okay, sorry oh, about man. it. Um, she's super funny, so smart. Um, she's now finally at an age which is like where it's like sad and dope when I have to leave for work. Because yeah, I before it. I leave, it's sad because she's like, she's literally like, but I'm going to miss you. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but then when I come back, she's like, daddy. I'm like, oh, it's like the movies. Yeah. It's like yeah, the real yeah, that's shows. Insane, dude. That's that shit's tight. Awesome. So cool. Um, Q finally got past the annoying age. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible two, as they say. No, 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 no. Two? It's the terrible baby. <laughs> oh, fuck. You're there, huh? He wasn't you know, even doing anything. I, I, that's the thing. He, don't, he wasn't doing shit but crying. So, look, oh. when I had my first, when I had Veda, right, everything was brand new. Everything was cute. Like, the crying, even though I wasn't sleeping. The <laughs> shitting, even though that shit You got, the, like, the lo- one single tear when he's <laughs> crying, like, I'm here now. Yes. <laughs> Your it was son like, comes out, you're like, fuck this, dude. Like, quite, <laughs> quite literally, bro. Been there, done that, all right? <laughs> yes. we, we've had enough. Because the first one, it's like, you can do no wrong in my eyes. This is a whole new experience for me. <laughs> when Q came out, I was I had forgotten and then got reminded. I'm like, I don't, I've been through this already. <laughs> this shit sucks. Yeah, you don't I'm even really- smile. <laughs> You know, and I was going through it low key, right? <laughs> but now they they both sleep through the night, and Q is expressive and all damn near walking and laughing. It's like, you know, being a dad of two is like, you know, now it's it's a whole new experience, mm-hmm. and it's um it's it's fun, man. It's fun. I never had the sibling experience either, so watching their whole dynamic, oh, that's cool. It's completely yeah, new yeah. for me. Oh, so shit. man, it's a great time. You know, I'm on some completely cliche shit. 
It's like, you know, you look into those baby's eyes and you feel motivated and you feel like you have purpose again. And a time where you feel like, oh, you know, like, uh, what, what, what am I doing? You know yeah, what I'm saying? And then, you, and then you see your babies and you're like, ah, this, this, is, this is what I'm, this is this my what life. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bachelor to father question. Okay. What's the diaper changing process like? Is that just fucked? Do you just not like it? Or like, is it just one of those things where you're like, <sighs> Both, both, both. You never <laughs> like it. You never ever like it. Uh, it'd be weird if you did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say like it, but yeah, is it yeah. something that you're like, oh, this is like easy and you get and used cool? to it? Yeah, I got you, this. yeah. Do, does it get like a? Is it like all right, cool, and like turn into like, I guess like a robotic, like yes. okay, I got to do this, or are you just every time like fuck? <laughs> uh, both. Because I tell you this now, I had I had literally never changed a diaper until uh, Veda. Like really? I, I like never, not for like a family member? Never. Or? I didn't have no little siblings. I didn't have no baby cousins. So I had never changed a diaper ever. Shit. So Veda was my first diaper. I had to learn that, you know, girls, you got to wipe front to back always. You don't want to get no doo-doo in the cooch. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the whole thing. I didn't know, girls. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know, um, and with Q, you know, Q is great. We can go both ways. It don't matter. You can do doo everywhere. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> do the balls. Look, do the balls. <laughs> do the ball, boy. <laughs> DDBB, that's what we call it, man. Uh, Jesus. But no, no, it becomes routine. You kind of like, uh, you, you, it's, oh, I smell a poopy. Who went uh, up? Not it. All right, cool, cool, cool. And, uh, you know, you just you just you deal with it, man. You get peed on, you get pooped on a little bit, and it's just kind of a part of life, And but it's beautiful because it's it's yours, and, and that's it, you know? Damn. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I just I'm I'm like I've been uh I've I've been I mean I'm I'm in my th- about to approach my thirty. I'm in thirty, but like you mm. know I haven't started it. Started. It, you know? <laughs> um, but I'm just like you know I have to give it like six or seven now years. Yeah. Like you know I got to reproduce soon. Yeah. Um, no, no, you can reproduce. That's the beauty of being a man, bro. Yeah. We got you can do it whenever, dog. We got just forever. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. But I want to like kind of be like. A, <laughs> I want to be like too old of a dad. You're gonna you want to be know, an active like, parent. Yeah. Yeah, I want to yeah. be like very active and I, I got think- you. No, because look, even even for me, am, am I a uh, big age of whatever I'm at? <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd be like, I, I was like low key, even with Veda, I'm like, whew, I'm getting a little tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really had to start uh, putting my health. Uh, as a priority, yeah. not only for myself, but for my kids. I wanted to ask about that on air. I see that you're like boxing and stuff and, yeah. and, and doing all that. Was that like a conscious decision of just like, I need to be here a little longer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was that and I felt like I need to do something just to get camera ready. You know what I'm saying? Like I like that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Cause I'm I'm you know, I'm still, you know, trying to do movies and shit, right? Yeah. So I was like, let me let me get right physically. You look right physically. I uh, appreciate that very much. Um, how how often do you do it? Like train? Yeah, once a week, and then I try to do a push up or two in between. Oh, no. do, you, do you go to the gym <laughs> at all? Or no, no. A personal trainer comes to the crib because. Oh, that's cool though. Yeah, yeah. It's just more convenient. That means you got money like that. Uh, low key. <laughs> uh, she, she was like, she, we we going through our finances lately. She was like, that's how much you pay <laughs> your trainer every month. And I was like, you gotta go to crunch. I was like, but well, baby, baby. Baby, is it not working though? He's like, I looked at you before I asked. <laughs> this is why I'm asking. <laughs> she was like, really? Nah. But um, you know, it's it's it it's working and she notices that. And so, you know, for camera, and yes, it was a conscious decision for the babies. I should get my health right, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like I, I think of that sometimes because I'm like, okay, you could you could have kids, but then like, you know, where's the time to like you know, of course, care about your own health and mm-hmm. and go to the gym and stuff. Like, I think of like Mark Wahlberg, and I'm like, dude, you wake <laughs> up at like two, three a.m. to go to the gym, but then I'm like, okay, he has a family though. Well, that's what's so. fucked up is you really because there's no time, you have to prioritize it. You feel me? Yeah, I have to have make time. I have to pay this motherfucker and be like, God, I'm paying this for this much to do this. Then let me make time for it. Right. Yeah. Same way where I got so busy, I wasn't seeing the homies. I had to. Like prioritize the homies the same way I would like prioritize yeah. a business meeting or a shoot. I'm like, yeah. I want to maintain my friendships. We're seeing each other, guys, this Thursday yeah. on yeah. this date. Lock it in. You feel me? Feel you. So it's like when you get older and, and time is more scarce, it's like you really kind of have to um like focus on what you want to give your time to. You know? Yeah. So. That's something that I'm at least trying to because you know, you can't really fully brace yourself for fatherhood, but yeah. I'm at least trying to see like how to split my time. 
by that by, by by then and of course being like somebody you know you're somebody i look at because like you know you you have a shit ton of shit to do you know you have auditions that you're doing and yeah. and this that and the third and of course too like i feel like you know, at, at a certain point, you're going to get that movie where it's like, you know, then you got to you got to yeah. you got to be abroad for however long. So I'm like, I wonder how he's going to handle it. But I feel like, you know, at the scale you're at right now, you're handling it really well. Um, well, luck, luck, uh, from what I see, at least. Luckily, shit's been slow. So uh, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. I can <laughs> luckily well, shit on the acting side has been slow so I can prioritize my kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was telling this for David because I've been trying to write a movie for me and David. I was right? about to ask not to yeah. like keep this going for like two hours, but like, okay, Denise ain't got nowhere that? to go. <laughs> Sorry, yes, the fuck I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen him in so long. <laughs> so like, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to get my catch ups on air. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, I remember you were telling me about that. What's the process on that? Like, are it's you, slow. Are you, it's you slow. still on that. I've, it, it's slow, and and having uh, another child didn't help. Uh, <laughs> Because my writing process is is not a something I can force, right? Are you doing the uh, like uh, that? You know that scene in Straight uh, Straight Out of Compton where Ice Cube is in the, this oh. beautiful home and all the kids are running around? He's like, "I'm writing Friday." But can I tell you what's so fucking funny, dog? That scene is literally what motivates me to keep. Because people are like, get help, have somebody else help you with this shit. Like a, a real professional screenwriter, I'm like. If Ice Cube can write Friday <laughs> on a fucking typewriter by himself, I can do this shit. You can, so, though. I know. Should you we totally tell him that can. he didn't do that? <laughs> no, no, keep the movie magic in my brain, right. bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know he had co-write, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure he did. So, uh, so I, um, I have to change the way I, I function now, as opposed to me being like, I feel creative, you know, like... I, I have to find time to set aside and write, and I, I, I can't do that right now because I'll be like, all right, spend all day with the babies. It's 10 p.m. I'm in bed. They got the fucking heat that's warmer on. I'm ready yeah. to write. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's a slow process, but we don't, we don't get it done. Yeah, I really want to. I mean, you, you know, of course, we're not going to talk about the concept on air, but I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to see what you come up with because it's like, I, at, at least per, like personally, when it comes to like the, the people in media that I watch, like I just... I'm like, you know, I, I really want to see that, like, the, the, the feature that you, you know, yeah. approach approach with because, like, I really do see you as, like, a fucking, like, I really feel like the moment you get that one, it's like, you know, I've always seen you as this. Thank you, man. But, like, I know for a fact the moment you get one, it's like, they're really going to no, no, you know. No, and I agree. Yeah. Because <laughs> so you've always, like, like you, you've you always been a figure, and it's like, I just think that that's like, I'm like, man, the moment he scores this shit, I feel like it's going to be like, you know, like the whole, I, I've always seen you as a short Asian Will Smith. And th that's also how I've seen myself. So yeah, like, like, <laughs> like I, and I, and that's just coming from somebody that uh, has been a fan, but also like a friend and yeah. seeing how much you work at it. Mm -hmm. So like. No, nah, it's it's just like I, I definitely want you to finish that shit. So if it's anybody to push you, it's me. <laughs> Thank you, man. Keep writing. <laughs> Thank you, man. Look, it's gonna get done. The uni the planets have been aligning lately for uh, like the universe has literally been like pushing me to get this shit done. So it will get done. And and to finish my thought, I was gonna say I was telling this fool David that like, hey man, if I gotta tube this shit, it's convenient and like do it myself. You know what I'm saying? It's convenient because Veda about to start preschool and. We're going to be able to film between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. when she's in school. <laughs> and I can still come home to my family. Uh, He's like, no. <laughs> you you got to spend some time. I'm like, look, man. <laughs> she's in preschool. Yeah, if, if, I'm, if I'm not backed by a major movie production company, we're doing this shit between school hours, all right? <laughs> nah, I feel you, man. Worst movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But we're getting it done, all right? That moment's gonna be fucking sick, though. Yes, fly, in full circle. Fly to man. LA for the. Hey, let me write you a little cameo in this shit too, dude. I I, I would love that, and yeah. and and it's just again, like I tell a lot of people, like you're you're on the Mount Rushmore for me when it just comes down to like generational Asian talent. Thanks, like, man. You know, especially with with people that act, like people still to this day just get so like shocked that we're friends. Like <laughs> I when know. I talk about you in a very, I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna like. Blah blah blah, and then Tim and blah blah blah, and they're like, oh, "You mean you mean?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I, yes, yes, I mean that." <laughs> you know, so wow, what a like, name driver. I feel. No. <laughs> um, I I call him Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, get the fuck out of here. Um, no, but I'm 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 really excited to see that and to see your like screenwriting skills because like when was like I I know I, I've seen Ty smile. So I didn't uh, write that. <laughs> you did it. Pete Flo wrote that. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. 
Oh, shit. Why you gotta dismiss it like that? What you trying to say about Peter's right? No, no, I'm trying yeah. to beg, I'm trying to beg him up. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been like you know following screenwriting blogs and fucking looking up tips and shit, which are helpful by the way, especially as someone with ADHD. Uh, <laughs> but yes, um, uh, thank you for that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. Because I remember when you first told me about it, I was like, oh, this is going to be sick. It will be. It will be. It's so funny in my head. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Hey, make sure. What, what's the album called for those who need to stream the album and those who don't know? Oh, Dearly Loved. Dearly Loved is out now. Um, and t- t- quick 20-second push. It's an album about dedication. It's an album about love. It's an album about sex, lust, Heartbreak, you know what I'm saying? My story the past two years. Yeah. Oh, I see what um, you did there. Dedication, dedication, dedication. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Layers. This is no chaser. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Make sure y'all Follow my boy Russell. Stream everything. Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. No Chaser Podcast. Watch everything. Follow everybody. Um, hey, man, I love you. I appreciate you. It's always good to see you, dog. Hell yeah, and I'm happy I got to run this with Rick, too. Yeah. All day, Hell yeah. Man. Hell yeah. All right, guys. Hey, uh, be good to each other and stay up. Uh, no Chase Podcast. I'm Tim Chantarongsu. I'm Ricky Shucks. I'm, I'm Russell. And Bye. that's Russell. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>